Hello, everybody. Howdy. Had to get a margarita for this one. You got me some whiskey going. Oy vey. You should show them your cute little cup. Oh, yeah. Well, I kind of made this out of uh, cow horn. I uh, make these from time to time whenever I get a big enough cow horn. But um, it says, you must be one with the whiskey. I know, whiskey's misspelled, but you have to remember. <laughs> no, that's... That's how they spelt it back in the 1820s. Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it. That's that's how the mountain men, you know, the illiterate mountain men spelt. They spelt it like it sounded. <laughs> Whiskey. <laughs> so, anyway, oh my goodness. Um, the day started out good, you know. It's like, oh boy, finally got our Russian band video uploaded, you know, edited and uploaded. So I was happy about that. So while it was uploading, you know, I had the laptop over here and I was uploading things from the beast onto my Dropbox. And I started uploading bulletins, which are um, the precursors to the kingdom ministries. And oh boy, that's when I started getting angry. It was unbelievable how everything was sell, sell, sell. Yeah. Can we sell a hundred thousand books in one week? One one week or a month? Week. A week. Yeah. What what was it like? Only twelve, thirteen thousand JWs at that time. Something like that. My goodness, you mom, Can you imagine the amount of work that that few of people would have had to have done to? Yeah. Try to sell a hundred thousand. And the pieces coal porters or pioneers, like they call them today, the coal porters, you know, really couldn't afford to get like a hundred books. So they had would have to have a credit account with the society. And of course they'd have to pay that back. Yeah. But, you know, they would you know, everything was sell, sell, sell. And they were always doing these stories and experiences and reports of how, you know, one person got like 50 subscriptions to the golden age, you know, and gave, uh, sold like a hundred books. And it was just... Do you think maybe uh, Rutherford might have exaggerated some of that stuff? I don't know. <laughs> you I know, don't know. You know, sort of like he exaggerated that millions now living will never die. That was yeah. a huge exaggeration, wasn't it? Yeah. So anybody who wants those bulletins, just let me know. In fact, I may just put the link to them down below because that was really interesting. You know, just all the stuff. I mean, it was like every single page there was something else that was just like, ugh. Yeah, so that got me riled. Well, I, I remember um, in the congregation we was in in Arizona, there was an older brother. Uh, his name was August Vogel, and I remember having multiple conversations with him regarding what the preaching was, what the preaching work was like back in his day. And I can remember some of the stories that you know he would tell me if they were running a little short on food, um, they would go out and sell magazines, and then they would earn enough money to buy their food. I remember him telling me at times, like during the winter months, because they were up in the Minnesota Twin Cities area. And, um, you know, back in those days, a lot of homes were heated with, with coal. And I can remember him telling me that, you know, on certain occasions, they would actually trade the literature for coal so they could keep warm through, through the winter. So, yeah. but the thing is, is that in those days, Rutherford, Rutherford was really gearing the minds of the Jehovah's Witnesses to sell, 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 and do more selling. <laughs> yeah. You know, sort of like what Watchtower is doing today, you know, with the Bible study program. Let's let's study with them and get them baptized in six months. Let's hurry up and get them baptized in six months. That and, didn't go over too well, did it? Well, I even remember talking to Kim, you know, when Watchtower was really pushing that program in, in our day, you know, I told Kim, I says, this this is going to be a failure because you you cannot, in my opinion, you cannot instill deep Bible truths in somebody's mind to get them baptized in six months and then have that remain with them for the rest of their lives. And, you know, for those of us that went through that period, stop back and think about how many JWs, how many Bible studies were actually baptized in six months, and how many of those are still with Watchtower <laughs> today? <laughs> yeah. 
And it was interesting, in one, there was a little tiny blurb, and it said, um, what should we be selling the studies and the scriptures for? And they were telling everybody not to reduce the price of these books. They said because it would be de detrimental to the organization <laughs> so that the, everybody had to ask the same price, you know, when they were selling these books. And like I said, the whole thing was just sell, 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 sell. Yeah. And, you know, indoctrination, and it's like, oh, my goodness. You know, I thought they were bad today. These were really bad. And uh, it was interesting because the phonographs, um, those little record players that they would take around to them, I ne it never dawned on me. The publishers had to pay for those. And the society well, was always advertising those. It's like the literature cards today. Yeah. You know, Watchtower's not ponying it ponying up any money. Yeah, and I did not know this, but they had to replace the needle for these after every time they used yeah. it. And so you could get like a pack of needles, you know, for like a buck or two, whatever it was. And then the tubes kept burning out, so you'd have to buy tubes. So they would always have these lists and price, you know, in these bulletins. And, you know, you'd have to write to the society, you know, and order all your stuff. And, of course, you can't just go to Radio Shack and get this stuff. You had to get it from the society. Mm -hmm. So that was enlightening for me today. And then, if that wasn't bad enough... Thank you so much, Atlantis, Nevada, and Petra, for sending us this information. It's just unbelievable. You know, I just couldn't believe it when I read this. And well, then when, when I Kim, read it to him. When Kim read me this letter when I get home this evening, I was I was furious. I mean, if if Watchtower, if I were really to bear my true feelings, um, we'd have to not make this video. Because when she was reading me this response... It'd be bleep, 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 oh, bleep, bleep. Just, <laughs> but I'll let Kim go on, and then we'll um, add a few comments in here. Julian, I swear smoke was coming out of these tears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. horrible. Now, we did a video probably about three or four months ago, and I think it was called, Are the Brothers and Sisters or the Jehovah's Witnesses in Chile Politically Neutral? And it was about how on certain days um, they have to display, it is a national law that they have to display the national flag, the Chile national flag. And even back then we had pictures yeah. like a flagpole yeah, with a Chile flag flying in front of a kingdom hall, you know, or like this one where it's here in the window, you know, and uh, you can go back to that video. It is on our new channel and uh, see that well now we have an update and like i said thank you so much atlantis and family for sending us this because we have a letter now with this then don't we have a comment from deep throat also yes yeah cool so i will read cool. that afterwards and apparently someone wrote into the chili branch and asking them about the display of national flags on society property and so the branch wrote back to this person, and their name and everything has been redacted. And it says, thank you very much for your letter dated, redacted 2014, in which you inquire regarding the displaying of the national flag on properties owned by the organization. We are pleased to provide you with information that we trust will prove helpful. As you mentioned, Jehovah's worshipers are no part of the world. Therefore, Christians do not participate in acts of devotion to national symbols, nor do we join in anthems or similar expressions of homage to nations or human institutions. At times, however, a Christian may be required to carry out certain actions that involve national flags, but that do not constitute acts of worship or homage. For instance, a Christian may be asked to raise a flag at his place of work as part of the duties. Regarding this, the Watchtower comments, if no ceremony accompanies the raising or lowering of the flag, then these actions constitute nothing more than performing such tasks as preparing the building for use, unlocking and locking the doors, and opening and closing the windows. In such instances, the flag is simply an emblem of the state and raising or lowering it, among other routine tasks, is a matter for personal decision based on the dictates of one's Bible-trained conscience. 
I'm going to insert a comment here. I don't see how it's the same. If you work for a school and you go raise and lower the flag, to me, that is different than if you possess and own a flag and are displaying it on your property. There's a difference there. At least well, that's my you know, how many Jehovah's Witnesses, how many times have you been out in service? And I can attest to this because I did the same very thing. How many times have you been out in service and driven by someone else's church and the American flag is hanging on a pole on church grounds? Remember what you used to say? See, they're involved with politics. They're not politically neutral because they're flying the nation's flag. There's no See? separation of There's church no and state. There's no separation. But yet, Watchtower is doing it now also. See the hypocrisy? Yeah. There's more to come. Well, the thing is, is okay, let's go back to Jesus and the Israelite days. Yeah. Okay, they had the Jewish synagogues. This would be like taking a Roman flag yeah. and displaying yeah. it on a Jewish, a Jewish synagogue, synagogue. Yeah. or on a sinking flagpole. Well, here's here's the thing. You know, Watchtower condemns other churches of the world for putting flags on holy ground, so to speak. Planting and, their sacred poles on holy yeah. ground? But yeah. Watch, see, but there's a reason why Watchtower is skirting the issue. Because in the Chile, Chilean law, if they don't do this, according to their law, they'll get fined. See, now it's going to cost Watchtower money not to do this. So now it's, it's a conscience matter, brothers. I wonder if Jehovah's <clears throat> Witnesses in like this country or the UK, Canada, places like that, you know, if they went and bought a flag and displayed it, see how quick it would be before the elders showed up <laughs> demanding yeah. you to explain I mean, why you're doing this. I mean, <clears throat> really, Jehovah's Witnesses, if I put a flag out here as a Jehovah Witness, I'm not going to bow down to it. I'm not going to pay homage to it. It's just simply a national emblem. But as a rank and file Jehovah Witness, you can't do that. But yet, the Kingdom Halls can in Chile. The, the hypocrisy yeah. is just, a, but it gets worse. Yeah, so back to the letter. What about cases in which a government requires that all buildings, public and private, display the flag on a certain date each year, as is in the case in Chile? Again, if no ceremony accompanies this requirement, each Christian or family head would follow the dictates of his Bible-trained conscience. Some may view the matter as simply complying with what Caesar requires since no acts or expressions of worship are involved. Caesar required the brothers in Malawi to sign a political party card. Caesar required that watchtower. And what did you tell them, brothers? Oh, you can't do that. Otherwise, you'd be making a political stance. You're not politically neutral if you sign that card. So, brothers, you can't do it. Oh, it, it's uh, we're sorry that you sisters are getting raped. We're absolutely sorry that you brothers are getting murdered. We're just sorry, but you brothers can't sign it because you want to remain politically. But yet, that government required it. Chile is requiring this, and you're saying, oh, it's a matter of effing. Oh, it now, pisses me right off when I get to this point of this letter. I know it. Now, for those witnesses who don't know the history, back in the later 60s, early 70s, the brothers and sisters of Malawi were being raped, beaten, murdered. I mean, you name it. We it, even it, read stories of where Jehovah's Witnesses were made, forced to walk on boards with nails protruding through their feet. Yeah. Now, the political card that they would have to sign and buy for 25 cents, there was only one political party in Malawi at the time. Right. So it would be like the equivalent of us here in the U.S. of having our Social Security card. Yeah, see, it's we just live, part of the government. Right, we live in a democratic society. We have no other choices to make besides the democratic society. Now, within the democratic society, there are party lines. But in Malawi, during this time, there wasn't. Uh -uh, there wasn't. It was a one ruler 
country. And yet, oh, just these these men are so flipping evil. It's just pathetic. when you think you know they can't possibly get more evil, then we get something like this. Yeah. Okay, so back to the letter. Others may prefer to pay the fine for non-compliance, if necessary, and not display the flag. In the case of a kingdom hall, the collective conscience of the bodies of elders that use it would determine the course of action. <coughs> Regardless of each Christian's decision, which is of primary importance, is not whether a Christian possesses a flag, but how he acts towards it, whether he shares an idolatrous worship of it or not. <laughs> the question is, for the brothers in Malawi, whether they possessed that political party card or not. It's how did they view it. Do you <laughs> honestly, you're going to sit there and tell me, Anthony Morris, that these brothers in Malawi would have bowed down and worshipped that card? <laughs> evil, evil, evil. Yeah. We hope that the foregoing will help you in explaining to your acquaintance why some kingdom halls may display the flag on a certain day of the year, while many others do not. In any case, we can be sure that our brothers in all lands direct their worship exclusively to Jehovah God, to whom they are rendering sacred service with a clean conscience. Please be assured of our warm Christian love and best wishes. Best wishes. Your brothers, the Associate of Christian Testigos de Jehovah. Sounds to me <clears throat> like your God, Jehovah, informed you a little too late. See, all of those lives that were lost, all of that blood that was spilt, your God, Jehovah, could have just as easily directed you back then regarding that political party card as God is directing you now. Regarding flying your the chili flag on, you know, let's face it, holy ground, Watchtower. See, your kingdom halls are holy grounds. And yet you're 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 allowing your congregations to collectively decide among the body of elders whether this is appropriate or not. Why didn't your God Jehovah instruct you that same way before all that blood was spilt in Malawi? Before them women were raped before children were torn away from their parents. You people are so friggin' evil, it's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. Well, I wonder how all the brothers and sisters who survived that... In yeah, Malawi, how would they feel now? How would they feel about that now, yeah. reading this? Especially when they learn that now it's a conscience matter that you can fly your state's flag or your country's flag inside of a kingdom hall. Yeah, and it's okay to possess it, you're just not worshiping it. Yeah. So they, they could have possessed this card as long as they didn't worship it. They didn't worship, worship it. it. Exactly. Idiots. Wow. These men are so... Oh. So Deep Throat sent some comments on this. And he says, So why were JWs in Malawi forbidden by Watchtower to buy a political card? No ceremony or worship to the Malawi ruler was involved. Nor did JWs have to compromise their faith in any way. And he's right. Exactly. That's why I'm so pissed about this. Yeah. Wasn't the requirement to purchase a card simply given Caesar's things to Caesar? Exactly. And Watchtower says that's all it's doing in Chile? See, yeah. you're, you're hypocrites. This whole entire organization is based on hypocrisy. Because, see, back then, Watchtower told the brothers, you can't buy the political party card. But see, all the while, all of this fanfare, all of this persecution was making world news. It was making headlines in Watchtower and Awake magazines. You see, it was a promotion to sell and peddle the magazines. Well, I can remember pictures on the front of Awake magazines yeah. of what was going on in Malawi. And I mean, you'd go door to door and people would always take they, that magazine. Yes, and not only that, many times at the door, I, I remember this personally. I remember this. I remember people at the door asking my mom about what was going on with the Jehovah's Witnesses in Malawi at that time. Yeah. See? Because it brought attention to Watchtower. 
and everybody felt so sorry for the witnesses, it helped yeah. them sell more magazines. Exactly. Okay, so back to Deep Throat's comments. Further, what would happen if a JW living in the USA or anywhere else displayed a flag on their home with no ceremony? Would Watchtower and its elders simply look the other way nope. and ignore it? If nope. the JW used the same explanation Watchtower uses in this letter? Hardly. 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 So it sounds like that if he was here, he'd be ranting too. Oh, yeah. It just... Jehovah's Witnesses, when are you ever going to wake up and see what Watchtower... How you people are being manipulated worldwide to sell Watchtower propaganda? Yeah, and then in Russia, you know, they're whining and crying oh, on JW.org yeah. about we're freedom. being banned and persecuted. In, what was it? Yes, boo-hoo, Watchtower. Samara. What about all of them brothers in Malawi that were being persecuted? And now you reverse your stance, idiots. Well, like I said, they're crying, you know, over in Russia being banned and all this. You know, this and then they're doing the happy dance at Bethel. This article, you know what? I, I wish some Jehovah Witness in Russia could get a hold of this and send it to their Supreme Court and say, Hey, Justice, look at what Watchtower's doing here. See? I think he just splashed me yeah, with splashed whiskey. Splashed some whiskey, yeah. <laughs> He's spilling whiskey on me. Yeah. What a waste of good whiskey. Yeah, what uh, what movie was that? Jack um, Elam, he was in a movie with Hulk Hogan. He was spas splashing his whiskey. Suburban in Commando. Suburban Commando. <laughs> he was Great spilling movie. his whiskey everywhere. <laughs> Great movie. Yep, he'd sit in an old rusted out Jack Jeep Elam. that was in the front yard. Yeah. And he'd be <clears throat> ranting and raving. and the Whiskey would be splying it, uh, flying everywhere. I see the similarity. <laughs> yeah. But... <sighs> You know, what? what is it going to take for you Jehovah's Witnesses to really realize that this religion is not backed by God? Because if this religion had God's, truly had God's Holy Spirit directing them, then God would have made sure that the brothers back in the early days would have had the same counsel to give the brothers in Malawi as they're given the brothers in Chile. But see, your God, Jehovah, is sleeping. Your God, Jehovah, you know, in the 70s, in the late 60s and 70s, when all this persecution was going on in, in, in Malawi, your God, Jehovah, was out taking a shit. That's, that's what was happening. See, your God, Jehovah, didn't care that these people were losing their lives. Just like now. Why isn't he helping you guys, you know, with the ban in Russia? Yeah. Why? Well, maybe because you've got this crap right here. See, Jehovah's Witnesses, when are you going to realize that your kingdom halls are supposed to be politically neutral at all costs? And yet in Chile, in Chile, they're flying the national flag. I wish a lot of us could write into the headquarter, world headquarters here in New York and ask well, them about this. I would just love to see somebody in absolute defiance in a kingdom hall, so I'd love to see a body of elders collectively get together and say, you know what? Screw Watchtower. We're going to fly an American flag in our windows and see what happens. Yeah. See what happens. That congregation will be disbanded quicker than I could fart. It's just, it's just appalling how hypocritical Watchtower is. The amount of blood that's on the hands of Watchtower is just appalling. The amount of child abuse is just appalling. Well, just like we've mentioned before, you know, I don't know if it's uploaded to our new channel or not, but we had mentioned that Anthony Morris admits that he was in Vietnam, a medic in yeah. Vietnam. He's got blood on his hands and he's of the anointed. So, you know... Your God, Jehovah, couldn't use King David because he had blood on his hands yeah. to build the temple. So his son Solomon had to do it. But yet you use Anthony Morris, who has blood on his hands, to build yeah. your spiritual temple he, here on earth? Yeah. He may not have actually physically squeezed the trigger, but he did support it, didn't he? He Same did. Thing. He did support it. He did salute their national flag, didn't he? Yeah. I did... This, this type of hypocrisy really chaps my hide. I mean, 
if this if this community, this society of XJWs really could see how I am furious inside. Well, to be honest, this is the second take. The first one could not be used because of all the F words. <laughs> Don't want to ruin my reputation here now, Kim. <laughs> oh, I'm sure everybody knows but, you, you know, get here's, wild. Here's the thing. When, when I was a young kid in those days, I was praying for God to lessen the persecution against Jehovah's Witnesses during that time period. God didn't lessen it. I can remember sitting at the meetings and they would be explaining what was happening over there. And I can remember just sitting there sobbing, yeah, you know, so loud that my mom would have to take me to the bathroom. Uh, why didn't your God, Jehovah, instruct them, the governing body or whoever was at the helm at that day? More likely it was Freddie Fran. Well, actually, there was a huge power struggle at that point in time for Watchtower. But why didn't God direct this type of counsel to stop that persecution because against it's not Jehovah's God's Witnesses? Organization. That's right, because it's not God's organization. Exactly. So, anyway, um, I will put the link to this to my Dropbox. Um, oh, actually, it will be on our website. Give me until tomorrow morning. That would be Thursday, January 28th. Give me until tomorrow morning. And I will have the art, uh, the letter and the pictures and everything on our website, watchtower.exposed. And thank you, everyone, for your comments and emails. And thanks again, Atlantis, you know, yeah, thank you. and family for sending us all this information. Thank you, Deep Throat, for your comments. Um, they help. Yeah, and then for those that went through that era, listening to all of the persecution that our brothers and sisters in Malawi were enduring. Please share your comments down below. Let let Jehovah's Witnesses see how idiotic Watchtower truly is. Let them see our anger. Yeah. You know, we are rightly angry about this. Can you imagine the families of those in Malawi, the surviving members I mean, here, here in in the world, on the world scene, they're celebrating 70 years since the liberation of a concentration camp. Them people that survived that concentration camp are remembering what their comrades went through. How millions of Jews didn't survive that. Can you imagine how the brothers in Malawi, the survivors? Must be feeling now when watchtowers start spewing this. Oh, the government says you need to do this. So it's a conscience matter. But the government in Malawi said you need to sign a party card. And watchtower said this is not a conscience matter. Don't sign it. Yeah. Evil, it, evil, It evil. reminds me of, is it <clears throat> Daniel? A disgusting thing standing in a holy place. Yeah, exactly. And Watchtower is a disgusting thing standing in a holy place. Because they're posing as something holy. When and they ain't. They are not. They're, evil, they're evil whitewashed the graves full of dead man's bones. Yeah. They look good on the outside, but inside, they're murderous, venomous vipers. Yeah. And you Jehovah's Witnesses and your trolls and apologists... Don't even bother. We're not no. even going to, you know. No, do your we're, research. We're not even going to answer, you know. Your all you got to do. Comments telling us we're going to die at Armageddon. And you know what? Whatever. But, you know. Watch, you didn't live through this period. If there's a hell, Watchtower is going to be in Watchtower is going to lead the way to it. I guarantee it. Yeah. Watchtower is leading the way to hell. Yep. Exactly. So you all have a I'm good I'm done. <laughs> good night, everybody. I think I've got to get him some M&Ms. <laughs> yeah. Of course, there's not enough M&Ms in the world, is there? Not for this one. Yeah. Love you all.